Hey everybody, welcome back to Troll Games. I'm Jake, and with me as always, Steven, the stream king, the Far Cry guy, the king of thieves, and the man I'm going to Disney with. I'm going to call him Wheezy all week. Woo! Call me Wheezy. Call, call me him, Wheezy. I'll call, call you trashy. Call him Wheezy. <laughs> Steven. Hey man, how's it going? Yeah. So so um, we'll, we'll get to this in, in a minute, uh, but at, uh, in the vein of our, our new nicknames for, for Disney... We, when we went to Comic Con, which will be discussed in this podcast, yes, um, they had this section where they had like all of the the rave kind of stuff you get, like the hats that scrolled words or the masks that lit up. And oh, there was yeah. one hat that had like a uh, like an LCD screen, and it just had one word scroll across repeatedly, and it was just trash. <laughs> so I was like, man. If, if this wasn't for sure 50 bucks, I would totally buy it for Jake. Oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, so, <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to all that in a bit. Uh, but first, this is Chortlecast, the official podcast of Chortle Games, where we talk about video games, movies, TV shows, whatever's going on in our lives, the whole nine yards, whatever we want to talk about. We've got a great show for you this week. Light news week, Stephen. Uh, yeah. Not a, we we were discussing show uh, stuff before the show started and just kind of was like eh, I don't really care to talk about any of this, so uh, we're going to talk about Stephen went to Comic Con uh, in Mississippi uh, this yeah. week. So Mississippi don't get your hopes up. It was just Mississippi Good Comic-Con. stories there, uh, and then we're just going to kind of chat a little bit about Destiny. Stephen's been playing a little bit of that Borderlands. Stephen's real hyped for Final Fantasy fourteen uh, MMO, uh, so we we may discuss a little bit of that. Maybe we're just going to hang out. We're just going to talk. Uh, we may go off the rails onto something else, but that's what you, that's why you love this show, right? That's what we're here for. So uh, so we are just purely just chatting it up today. We're just chatting it up today. We're okay. having a good time. If you're hanging out, watching us live, chat it up with us. Steven and I will be chatting there. So like it's almost like we're chatting with ourselves a little bit. This is a very meta show when it when it's it really is. airing. So we, we we progressively make the podcast more and more meta. Like eventually, and I've had this thought a few times. Um, I uh, eventually I'm going to start addressing myself in the chat to where it's just kind of like towards the end of the podcast. I'll be like, "All right, Stephen, what's our schedule?" And then just stand there, and then in the chat I'll be like, "Thanks, Stephen. Here's our schedule. <laughs> Take it away." I like that. All right. Well, anyway, uh, yeah. So let's just jump into it. So I want to hear first about this Comic Con. Mississippi Comic Con. I've okay. never been to this. I'm super jealous. I should I should have been going. I should have gone to this before. But um, you got to meet some pretty big names. I did. Um, so so a, a disclaimer there. This was my first time, not just at Mississippi Comic Con, mm-hmm. but at a con in general. Oh really? I've never been to one. Yeah. Um, and I've always wanted to go to one. Mm-hmm. And I haven't gone to this one before because if i'm being honest it usually sucks um <laughs> well it is, a couple it is mississippi e- a very small state um, yeah a couple years ago um the top billing person was ernie hudson the ghostbuster that no one remembers like everybody was like oh man ernie hudson's gonna be there and it's like uh-huh. he is a ghostbuster but but he's the only one who whose career wasn't basically Over destroyed after, after Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to pull up a list of all of the people that were there, because I know who I met, but there were mm-hmm. a good few guests. Maybe that'll get me there. Um, but th- there was a lot of cosplay, mm-hmm. of course. Of course there was a lot of cosplay. I saw, um, I saw, I've seen a couple photos uh, from some other friends that I knew that, that, that were there. Um, a lot of, a lot of anime, and Lucy from, a lot of uh, DC that I saw around there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Pretty good stuff for, especially, you know, not to knock on Mississippi. I know there's a lot of great talent out there, but it's usually hidden or buried under layers and layers of stuff. But there was some yeah. pretty, good, pretty good cosplays out there. So, so, so here are some people that were there um, from WWE, so wrestling, Mick Foley and Ric Flair. I know you probably don't know who either of those people are. Not a clue. Not a clue, but I appreciate um, it. They're big names in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, Kathy Najimy, I think. She was um, Peggy Hill in King of the Hill. Um, <laughs> and the and the fat witch from Hocus Pocus. Damn it, Bobby. <laughs> um, Jason Lieb- uh, Liebrecht was there, um, mm. who 
is the voice of uh, Dobby from My Hero Academia, mm-hmm. the blue fire guy. Mm-hmm. Um, where What's the other guy's name? Uh, Justin Cook, who was Kirishima mm-hmm. on My Hero Academia, the red-haired guy with the hardening skin. He yep. was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, he was great because he actually uh, – we went to the My Hero Academia panel. He yelled into the microphone as Kirishima – like when he wasn't on stage, like when they were walking up, and it was like, oh, that was that was pretty cool because he 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 doesn't look like you'd expect him to look. Um, right, no, he's like an older knew. guy. They never. Yeah, knew. he's like an older guy with a ponytail. Like, <laughs> really? So weird. Yeah. That's funny. Um, Kel Mitchell from Keenan and Kel was there. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. So so, um, we didn't see him, um, but we did see where he was doing autographs and pictures. He had a two liter of orange soda underneath his t- I was his desk. just about to say, you should have been looking for the orange soda, Stephen. And <laughs> That's how you would have found him. And, and I, I just was thinking, like, man, how many people brought, like, a bottle of orange soda to get signed by Kel Mitchell? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But also, thousand. like, how much do you think he actually likes orange soda? If I was him, I would hate orange soda at this That's point. That's kind of what I was about to say. I feel like I would probably hate it. But yeah. then again... You know, I'm over here loving LaCroix, and I feel like I'm slowly becoming a LaCroix person. And, like, if I became known as that. But I don't know. Yeah, but, like, imagine if everywhere you went, <clears throat> people yelled at you, Who loves LaCroix? <laughs> and they waited for you to go, Jake does, Jake does. <laughs> I don't know. Are they bringing like, me LaCroix, too? Well, that's a good point. Maybe, I don't know. It, personally, if it was me, I would probably hate the stuff because, it would, for one, I'd have diabetes because it'd be Dr. Pepper. But two, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it would just be like a resentment thing. But he yeah. did have a two-liter of, of orange crush underneath his, his table. Um, who else? Some of the Power Rangers were there. Uh, Jason David Frank, I think is his name, the guy who played Tommy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I laugh at that because I don't think I've ever seen a Comic-Con or any kind of like – just general pop culture con um, poster of its guests and mm-hmm. not seen him on it. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure Tommy from Power Rangers literally just goes on tour 365 to different cities to just appear at cons. He's Surely they get paid, right? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, there's, there are a lot of celebrities that, that make bank off of this. Like well, that's I'm, that's their source I, of income. I yeah, I feel like I would do that if that was if yeah. that was a if they were paying you, I'd go to every con they'd take me yeah. to. Um, Edward Furlong was there, who was um, gosh, um, John Connor from Terminator Two. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we're getting into the big names. Um, John Rice Davies was there, mm-hmm. and for those of you that don't know that name, it is Gimli from Lord of the Rings. You have my axe. I met Gimli. When you sent me the photo of you and Anna with him, I was like, Steven is peeing himself right now. He is <laughs> so freaking excited. So, so like like Gimli's a great character. They're right. all great characters. They're all they're all classic. But it's like he he's he's probably my towards the bottom of out of my favorites within the fellowship, but that's like the bottom of that group is still pretty high. Good. Like mm-hmm. pretty high. And this dude, he's for, also from Indiana Jones. If if you've seen any of those, he was <laughs> Sala. Um, he just has a very deep, booming voice. He talks kind of like Gimli talks. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we walked up to meet him, we shook his hand, and uh, Anna was wearing an Aquaman shirt, and he was just like, "Oh, Aquaman! I I was I was in that movie." And Anna was like, "What were you?" And he was like, "Yes, I believe I was uh, one of the shrimps." <laughs> <laughs> And it was like, man, I love this guy already. He he was he was just super nice, super chill. And um, when we went to get our picture taken with him, um, and he mentioned this at his panel, uh, he tries to bring the shyness out of people, not to make them uncomfortable. He tr- he tries to make shy people comfortable who want to meet him. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. he would do things like when we would pose for picture, he tickled me and Anna, like. <laughs> on our sides just to get us to, to, to smile and so Gimli walked away like oh my gosh Gimli tickled me <laughs> that's, that's that's the title of this podcast I've just yes. made that decision now Gimli t- 
Stephen got tickled by Gimli. Oh my god! Wow. Gosh. Oh man, Gimli tickled me. That's pretty funny. <clears throat> it was it was great. Um, <laughs> but everybody there was super chill. The nice thing, and um, this will bleed straight over into the last person that we saw there. Mm-hmm. Um, Anna has gone to the New Orleans Comic Con mm-hmm. <clears throat> a few times. She met Stan Lee and David Tennant there and got mm-hmm. her picture taken with them before uh, Stan Lee died, mm-hmm. um, which I still hate that I never got to meet the guy. But right. she told me that, like, when we walked away from John Rice Davies, she was like, that never would have happened at, like, the New Orleans Con. Because mm-hmm. at bigger conventions, it's pretty much like, hi, nice to meet you, picture, go. Like, because mm-hmm. they've got so many mm-hmm. people to get through. So at this, at this convention, we got to talk to these people. We got to mm-hmm. meet them and actually get get to get to know them a little bit. Like, even if it was just like 30 seconds to two minutes, right? we, we, we got to talk to them. And, and that was really cool. Which brings me to um, my favorite interaction with uh, any of the people. Because John Rice Davies, I loved him and I, I, I loved his panel. But, mm-hmm. like, I met Justin Briner, um, the voice of Izuku Midoriya, a.k.a. Deku, from My Hero Academia, mm-hmm. r- my favorite AKA anime right now. one of our favorite animes. <laughs> a.k.a. one of my favorite fictional characters ever right, right. now. Mm-hmm. Like, that whole question of if you could define yourself as a combination of three different fictional characters, Deku's, like, at the top of that list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and I got to meet his voice actor, and I just walked up to him, and he was just super bubbly and nice, and he kind of, you could tell that it was Deku. He didn't talk mm-hmm. exactly like him, mm-hmm. but it was Deku. Um, and he was just like, well, hey, guys, how are you? And just asking about, uh, uh, about like, our day, and he was like, what have you guys done today? Uh, what's been your favorite thing you've seen so far? We had, like, an actual just conversation with, with uh-huh. Deku. And um, I even said to him, I was like, uh, you'll be happy to know that uh, my wife has never had never seen anime before, and I chose her first anime to be My Hero Academia, and she absolutely loved it. And uh, he was just like, oh, yeah, good choice, good choice. We just, we just shot the breeze, you know. And then I said, also, Midoriya is by far the best character, not at all biased. Um, but he signed a picture. Um, we didn't did y'all get a have picture. that picture, or did they, like, give it to you? They, they gave it to us. Okay. We got to choose from four different um, little posters. Gotcha. Um, he signed it. Steven and Anna, you too can be a hero, plus ultra, mm-hmm. Justin Briner. <laughs> I love that he said plus ultra. I mean, I know yeah. he had to, but like, uh, like it's just great. I even leaned over to Anna, and I was like, after we were walking away, I was like, man, I should have gotten him to put plus ultra. And she showed me, and it said at the bottom, plus ultra. <laughs> and it was like, of course he put plus ultra on there. Of course he did. Um, but but he, was, he was super nice. We didn't get a picture with him mm-hmm. um, just because... I could have like gone up to somebody. I could have even gone up to you, and and you're you're a huge fan of my hero academia. I could have been like Jake, look who I got a picture with, and you would have been like, it's a random oh, white yeah, guy. Yeah, <laughs> oh, cool, Steven. Yeah, that's what exactly. So what so that's done. why I figured the autograph was probably a better call. Was um, it an option of picture or autograph? It was thirty dollars for one, uh, fifty dollars for both. Wow. Um, yeah, but. That was the only thing we spent money on, mm-hmm. and um, and it was just one of those things where like, and this was also what I thought about during my decision making prog- prog- process. Um, as they're signing the autograph, mm-hmm. that gives you way more time to talk to them. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, when John Rice Davies, for example, when he was signing something. He was signing, uh, a, a, like, a, a thing for Sala, um, mm-hmm. like a picture of Sala, and he signed it Gimli. <laughs> and he looked at it, and he was like, oh, well, that won't do. That's the wrong character. Here, let me give you another one. You can sell that one for a markup. Say it's a limited edition <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> so they, oh gave, they gave him a, a free um, poster, and I, I, I ran into, and I, I, once, once I... I guess I'll just talk about like generally what the experience was outside of just the people we talked to. But I ran into um, the manager of the GameStop that I go to yeah. uh, here. His name's Matt. Um, which, funny, like this is how much of an impact 
this guy has made, like, as far as my GameStop going experiences. Yeah. He was at a store closer to me, and then I noticed he wasn't there anymore, and I went to the other store, and he was there, and he was like, yeah, this is my store now. And I was like, okay, it's my store now, too. Cool. I'll so I, I, go, I go a little bit further because, because he's just that great. Um, but I ran into him, and, and we were talking, and uh, he was like, you guys want some free stuff? And we were like, absolutely. And so he gave us a couple Mortal Kombat 11 tins, so we got those for free. Uh, okay. And he, to- he told us that he ran into John Rice Davies um, when they were headed back from lunch. Mm-hmm. And they saw him, and they were, like, yelling quotes at him and everything. And then he walked up to him, he was like, you guys want a picture, don't you? And they were like, well, we, we won't say no to a picture. You know, this is, this is Gimli. <laughs> and so the people that were accompanying him, like the, the con people, I guess, mm-hmm. they were like, no, 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 we're not doing that. And then John Rice Davies just looks at him, and he goes, shut up. And then he's like, come on, let's get a picture. <laughs> Wow. What a so, guy. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a super cool guy. Like, they were all really nice. Um, but it was just a bunch of vendors. Like, it's what you'd expect from a con. There mm-hmm. were a lot of people selling either T-shirts or jewelry or weapons um, mm-hmm. or whatever else. There was an artist there who did various um, just, like, cover mm-hmm. art. Mm-hmm. Art, art pieces of art. I don't know. They were they were going for sixty bucks, but I almost bought one because he he did like a splash page of Avatar: The Last Airbender, <sighs> and it was the most gorgeous piece of art for that I've, that I've ever seen because it looked like a movie poster, uh, and so man. it had like all of the characters and it had Aang in the middle of an Avatar state. Um, it was it was really impressive. I almost got it, but but it was sixty dollars. Um, mm-hmm. Same guy did um, Threat Level Midnight from The Office, Michael Scott's movie that he made. <laughs> but um, wow. it was a lot of fun, a lot of cosplayers. I saw probably four Bakugos, uh, five or six Midorias, um, not as much Deadpool as you might think. It was very My Hero Academia heavy this year. Well, um, if someone, you, you mentioned like four people from Yeah, there, there, there were four people from My Hero Academia that were there. Yeah. Um, that's huge. But, uh, That's crazy. Yeah, I saw. Uh, we saw Tokoyami, the mm-hmm. um, Dark Shadow guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Someone came with like a pullover Tokoyami bird head, and had a hunchback too that was Dark Shadow. <laughs> um, but the best cosplay there. Spoilers for Avengers Endgame, if that's still a thing. Oh, I know exactly where you're going. I saw this one. <laughs> You, you did okay. Yeah, we wa- the first person we saw when we walked in the the, the convention was probably a three hundred and fifty pound dude with a fake beard and fake long hair with Stormbreaker in his right hand and stretch shorts, <laughs> and he was just fat Thor going around hugging people, getting in their pictures, being like, ah, you know, like I'm a fat guy. <laughs> I was uh, I can't remember oh, whose man. photo it was that I saw it, but I was trying to figure out if I knew the person who was playing that fat Thor uh, but uh, I don't think I knew him so that's funny He, yeah his yeah. was pretty I mean you know it's pretty easy but yeah it's funny yeah but um, we, so I want to uh, while, while we're just kind of paused I want to backtrack so you said y'all went to a My Hero Academia panel yes did they talk about anything interesting no I mean <laughs> <laughs> we, we straight up we now. left we, we left pretty pretty quickly because they just kind of um, Justin Cook did his whole thing they all walked up there Justin Briner didn't have the mic very much and he was mm-hmm. kind of soft spoken so you know I immediately tuned out mm-hmm. um, but it, we were all pretty tired mm-hmm. um, and we hadn't eaten like okay. since breakfast and that was about 4.30 um, so we were all pretty hungry and tired so I was asking because I, I took my sister's which mm-hmm. um, that's what I'll talk about next. Something happened with, with my sisters. Oh, gosh. It was pretty funny. Um, but I looked at them and I was like, do you guys want to stay for this? And they were like, I don't, I don't know. And then uh, they were taking questions from the crowd. And this mm-hmm. is why they didn't talk about anything interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, but they took questions from the crowd. And one of the questions was, what do you think of the Internet shipping – Dobby and Shoto Todoroki, which that's the blue fire guy who is a mm-hmm. villain, and Icy Hot, the fire and ice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ca- 
And so when they when they talked about that, as soon as I heard that, I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Which um, fun fun thing about Todoroki, probably the best shirt that I saw being sold there was um, a picture of Todoroki, and on top of it, it said Dentine Ice. <laughs> Which was like, oh man, that's, that's so clever. I hate it a little bit. Um, that's so clever. But um, at the, it, like, it, th- there were good questions asked at um, the John Rice Davies panel because uh-huh. um, one person asked, like, you were a writer at one point. What's your, what, what's your inspiration to anyone here? Uh, one person asked uh, if you were to, if Spielberg was to ask you to come back for an indie sequel, like Indiana Jones sequel, w- would you mm-hmm. do it? And his answer was basically like, well, you know, I've said to Spielberg that uh, the first one and the third one are the best ones, and the second and the fourth one are not so much. And what was different about those? Which, of course, the second, and, uh, the third and the first one were the ones that had him in it. So he was right. making a joke like, I'll save these films. Um, but then um, someone asked him, what is your favorite read from Shakespeare? Because ah. this, this dude can do Shakespeare. Right. Um, and... So he, he gave us context, and it was like, it goes a little something like this. Puts the mic down, and he just, no mic, belts out Shakespeare to everyone at this panel. And, like, it, it was, I don't, I, don't, I don't know Shakespeare. I, I'm, mm-hmm, I'm not mm-hmm. one for any of that kind of stuff, but, but I was like, dang. I was moved that, a little bit. <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. Um, so back to what happened with my sisters. Um. The, Laura, the oldest, she's 15, um, she decided that she was going to dress up as a ninja from Naruto. <laughs> so she got a jacket that kind of looked like the Chunin vest. Mm-hmm. She made paper shuriken and kunai because they're so freaking crafty. Mm-hmm. Um, and she and Maria, the youngest, who's 13, they made Hidden Leaf Village headbands out of a blue bandana with a white pattern on it that they got from Walmart. And I think they said it was parts of a soda can that they cut out and then glued on so it was reflective. Wow. It was crazy. My my sisters are crazy. Um, And this lady walks past them, and you can tell that these are like arts and crafts Naruto headbands. Mm -hmm. She walks past us and she goes, "Uh, excuse me, did you get those here? (laughs) And, And Maria, who's super awkward, she was the one that asked. She just went, no, no. <laughs> and it was like, okay, lady, that is clearly a craft from home. Uh-huh. I- increase your standards <laughs> for for con merch. <laughs> wow. They uh, might could have made a buck. They could have been like. Uh, that's what my dad said. No, he we said, made it. Should have been like, um, yeah, it's uh, 20 bucks. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well, that's fun that they got to dress up though yeah uh, it was really good time I would I'll definitely go back next year mm. but um, I think there would need to be at least one person there that I would actually want to see want to see yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's interesting well yeah I've, I've only been to uh, RTX and uh, that's kind of a con um, and it was pretty interesting it's Mm-hmm. It's a weird experience meeting people that you you feel like you know because you either watch a lot of their content or you uh, have seen right. them in a bunch of movies or something. So like you feel like you know them, but they don't know you. <laughs> yeah, and so it's just very it's very strange, it's very awkward. So I, I have yeah. mixed feelings about it, those type of things. It, but I anyway. I did, I was shy. I was hesitant to to go up to anybody. Mm-hmm. I was almost just like, I mean, just the fact that I can say that I I, I saw them. Mm-hmm. And I was in the same place as them. It was pretty cool. Right. Um, but it, it, we were in line to meet John Rice Davies. And um, and I was I was a little nervous because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say to this guy. This dude is a very high prolific actor who mm-hmm. br- it was part of one of the greatest cinematic events in history, being mm-hmm. the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, and while we were in line... Uh, when he was talking to some people in front of us, he did Gimli's laugh, and I was just like, "What do I do?" Because <laughs> it's like it's Gimli. It's um, Gimli. So, so we went up to t- when we went up to talk to him, 
and we get, went, got in the picture with him, I just looked over to him and I just went, you know, you're taller in person. Because <laughs> he was a, a dwarf. In the yeah, oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. I got the joke. And he did He did the laugh at that. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. That's good. Well, I'm glad you all had a good time. That's a lot of yep. fun. It was great. Well, uh, let's jump into uh, just kind of what we've been playing, what we've been doing. Uh, obviously, we've been playing a lot of Destiny. Um, we did the Menagerie some more this week. Um, yep. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I discovered that um, the there's a sword in Heroic Menagerie that I'm going to have to go for. It's uh, basically Quick Fang 2.0. It's called oh. Gold Tusk, I think. Okay. Um, it's basically Quick Fang, but uh, a lot more powerful. Um, Does that mean you're going to start workshopping a different exotic? Well, so I'm going back and forth between... Do I want to use Trinity Ghoul, which is the uh, exotic bow that when you hit a precision shot, the next shot you have is loaded with arc energy and basically will hit a target and then chain react and hit several targets. (sighs) And I just can't decide. I can't decide if that's what I want to do. I think that you should get used to Trinity Ghoul. Mm Mm-hmm. And then just use Le Monarch when you get it and realize that you like it better. I'm you standing I'm, by. You think I'm going to like Le Monarch better? I think you will just because it's not dependent on landing two shots. It's just dependent on timing one shot. Um, right. And I, I, I personally well, think you like it better because it have does. To, you don't have to land two shots for uh, Trinity Ghoul. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I can't decide if I like it or not. Because when mm-hmm. you get the arc shot, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if you hit them or not. Wherever it lands, that arc chain is gonna go out. So, like right. sometimes, if you've got a small group, it's better to hit the ground where they're headed, yeah. Instead of hitting them to do that, and I feel like it throws my aim off. Like I'm not very good at shooters to begin with, and so mm-hmm. when I'm when I'm getting that arc bolt, and in my head I'm thinking, "Where's a group of enemies? Shoot at the ground." Because that's just that's going to work better in some sense instances. Right. I feel like it makes me worse at at aiming, but I don't know. Right. I just and, I what, go back and, and what I mean by that landing two shots, I don't mean literally necessarily landing two shots on an enemy, but your two shots have to go where you want them to go, regardless. Right. Even if that is in set area, and with Lemon Arc, you're still getting that AOE damage. Um, if, if with with uh, precision hits on poison, mm-hmm. um, but you're also getting poison, so that you're getting kind of that extra benefit from the you're, you're basically getting, it's almost like getting exploding head mm-hmm. on a bow because exploding head's all about getting that extra little bit of damage, and that's kind of what Lemon Arc does. Right. Um, and honestly, I think both of them are great weapons. I mm-hmm. I like Trinity Goal. I enjoyed it when I used it. I just think that for what you're going for, you'll probably enjoy Lemon Arc more because. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, and I'm going based on like how you talk about how you are at Destiny. Cause I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't think you're that bad at Destiny. I don't think you're as bad as you think you are at Destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, especially uh, after watching like lately, cause you, you've gotten a lot better. Um, but I think uh, basing off of how you talk about how you play Destiny, I think that having a weapon that is less about cycling through the the shot that gets the charge and the charge itself and is just mm-hmm. more about getting in a rhythm of like almost that muscle memory of mm-hmm. pull and shoot at this exact moment i think that would probably be more something that you would like yeah and the other thing i keep going back and forth is i just i can't let go of black talon black yeah. talon is so good of a weapon like yeah. it's it's the power weapon that i want to be using um, cause I mean, like what's the, the heavy machine gun that you have that, that we both have, um, uh, the exotic, the hammerhead or, or something like hammerhead. that. Hammerhead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, like that, that's kind of my, that or Thunderlord are kind of my, oh, you know, we're in a raid. It's like, it's go time. Like nobody can mess up. Those are the weapons mm-hmm. I'm going to switch to. Um, yep. And obviously, I'm we're we're on this path of trying to get to 750, and once I get to 750, I can kind of like 
say, okay, let me level up, you know, multiple weapons to be at that level. Um, right. And I'm not there yet, but you know, Thunderlord is one that I'm keeping with the with the intent to have it ready. Um, but like, I just I don't know. I don't I don't want to run with uh, Hammerhead as my main power exotic just because the way I play, I'm not gonna go for that. Like like the way I play right now is I've got my bow. Hammerhead's my not an exotic though. No, I know it's not. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I, it's okay. my power weapon. Did I say exotic? Okay. I meant power weapon. I think you said, uh, yeah, I, I just got confused. Yeah. I, I, I don't want that to be my power weapon because this is how I play. I, I, I shoot my bow, and that's pretty much it. And if I see yeah. something coming that's either shielded by void or is just a bigger enemy, like if I see a knight or something coming at me, mm-hmm. that like wouldn't necessarily be like, oh, man, time to bust out Thunderlord. Cause like this is it. This is the big fight. It's not a boss, you know. Um, stuff like that. I feel like I can pull out Black Talon, whack them once or twice with a with a blast, and then put it right back up and go back to my bow. Whereas Thunderlord or or even Hammerhead, I would probably never pull it out until the boss happened, um, yeah. which is probably how most people would would play it. I think, but um, I don't know. But like Trinity Ghoul. Uh, it, well, if if I'm not using Black Talon, and so say Hammerhead is in my equipment, the only thing I'm using is Trinity Ghoul, and Trinity Ghoul's fine. But right, it, it's it's the only thing I'm I'm using. I'm I, w- I do have shotguns in both my primary and energy slots, like as that's those are what I want to be my right. yeah secondary weapon that I might pull out. Right. So like yeah, I'd have those. But I don't know, like so. If I tell you what, if swords could be in the energy or uh, primary or energy slot, I would probably put hammerhead down there and then just have a sword ready to go. Yeah. But I don't know. So this sword that you were talking about, gold, gold tusk? tusk, golden. It's either golden tusk or gold it, tusk. Yeah. Is it elemental at all? I'm. Um, hmm. I don't think so. Let me look up though. I'm checking. It's it's a legendary. Um, and I just I was hearing about it last night. Somebody was comparing it to Th- Thronebreaker, I think, which is another. Uh, yeah, Thronebreaker was sword the uh, the Titan uh, exclusive sword. Yes, but I think there's a new version of it that came out with Heroic Menagerie. I think Thronebreaker is the new one. Crown Splitter was the old one. Yes, that's right. Uh, let's see, Gold Tusk. That's apparently a restaurant near me. Gold, interesting. Golden Tusk Thai cuisine. That would not be a Thai I'm, restaurant. Not what I'm looking for. Uh, Destiny. Uh, okay. Golden t- Gold Tusk is a void sword. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, so, what I've been doing, like the way I've been running Storm Stormcaller, and this may be something that you can find useful as well. Um, I have an answer to everything as far as elemental shielding is concerned. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, my energy weapon is. Um, <coughs> sorry, I might be coming down with something. Your is, energy um, is solar, right? Ringing nail. Yeah, the solar assault rifle that is amazing. Um, and then my heavy weapon is hammerhead, which punches void. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my arc soul is arc. So literally, I have an answer for every single shield. So yep. what you may want to do is create a loadout where you have an answer to every shield so that right. it's less about, um, like, so you don't really find yourself without a solution. Mm-hmm. That way, um, the sword could be your void. Here comes a, here comes a void guy. And then the shotgun could be your, here comes a big mm-hmm. guy with, with, with neutral health. Right. Um, you could have Trinity Ghoul as your arc solution, and then if someone with a solar shield is charging at you, you throw a knife fan at them. Yeah. See, um, that's what I'm, I'm playing solar, right? Uh, void. Yeah. My Black yeah. Talon is my exotic uh, and power weapon that does void. Yeah. And then I've got Badlander, I think, is the shotgun that I prefer to use, and it's arc. Um, yes. Yes, so that's correct. I, I've got that pretty covered. It's just, okay, good. It's just a question of, you know, it's just how much do I really want to use Trinity Ghoul? And I like it, right. and I, I see benefits for it, um, but I just don't know that I can sacrifice Black Talon is, right. is really where and I'm see, at. And t- see, to me, um, and this totally depends on the player, 
Mm -hmm. Uh, But to me personally, exotics define you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So it makes the most sense to me that the exotic goes in a slot that can be as frequent as possible, which is why I am not completely against using exotic power weapons Mm -hmm. because sometimes, I mean, those things are so freaking powerful that they are just the solution. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But in, like, I try to build for um, versatility usually, Mm -hmm. um, having an answer to a lot of different things. So to me, having an exotic weapon as a primary energy makes sense because I am using those all the time. I'm using those all the time. And I can say my build does this and it not have an asterisk of when I have power ammo, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, that's why, like, Crimson, for example, it helps me be on the front line because it heals me per kill. I can Mm -hmm. keep shooting and I'm able to spit out orbs like like there's no tomorrow Mm -hmm. um, because of its masterwork. When I Mm -hmm. run um, Dawnblade, a a Tomb of Grace, I'm probably going to run... Um, Graviton Lance, because whenever I get a precision kill with it, I send out smaller void orbs that can tap enemies to damage mm-hmm. them a little bit. But if I'm in the Well of Radiance wearing Phoenix Protocol, every assist and kill I get mm-hmm. gives me super energy back. So I'm able to tap those enemies to get a technical assist mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. while shooting. And so the, the trick there is like, if that is uh, matters enough to you to where you want to be able to say, this is something my character does, mm-hmm. period. Then maybe consider putting your exotic in either a energy or a primary slot. Um, if, if not, if, you're, if you are completely happy with just your kinetic and your energy weapon and you, you are totally fine with this is a sometimes thing, but mm-hmm. when, it is a, when it is a thing, it, it kills. Um, yeah. That's okay. Well, and see, that's the thing is like I mostly use – my primary and my power right. being uh, black talent because I I'm I'm kitted out and especially when I'm wearing the equipment that I want to have that I've kitted out with the right uh, mods and stuff I I right. get power ammo very frequently and then I have things triggered to where I have a lot of sword ammo um, and even though black talent when you do R two and you hit a heavy hit um, even though technically that takes I think three or four ammo. Um, mm-hmm. I still have a lot of hits left to go. Right. Um, so, and I, I, and like I was saying earlier, I, I pull it out whenever I see somebody coming with a shield because one hit void or not is going to knock out that shield and let me go back to my bow and finish them off. Um, so I don't know, but I, so, I totally see what you're saying. And that's, the, yeah. I think that's probably more than anything. That's the problem for me right now is yeah. my exact armor piece is not affected by anything else. It's just, right. did you use your super right? Did you hit a lot of enemies? <laughs> Here's your super yeah. energy back. Um, and both of my exotics that I'm kind of toying around with, that being Black or Black Talon and Trinity Ghoul, neither one of those matter what else I'm using. It's just Black Talon, its whole thing is it can shoot, it's a sword that can shoot a big blast that hits mm-hmm. like a rocket missile or a rocket launcher. So, so and, do you prefer having that armor separate from the weapon or do you prefer to have there be a synergy there i wouldn't mind having a synergy just the way i play i don't know that there is a synergy i mean like i said i've got oath keeper um which is the it's a bow exotic armor that's supposed to let you hold a shot for as long as you want and do some other things but I have not found a situation where that really matters or helps me. Um, well, you so mentioned I, Le Monarch is always procced at full draw mm-hmm. um, with Oathkeeper. Right. Um, that could be a good synergy because that way you're basically guaranteeing every single shot mm-hmm. is a poison cloud. Yeah. Um, and, I don't know if it's see, worth losing. I need, maybe I need, I, I need to get Le Monarch and try it and, yeah. and see what, what kind yeah. of difference it makes for me. So, so, so to, to, for you personally, mm-hmm. um, this is what I do, guys. I help people find their best build. I help them be their, their best selves. Um, <laughs> You're such a good therapist. Thanks. The destiny therapist. Anyway, do you, are you 100% satisfied with the Shards of Galinar, or are you just using them because they seem to be the most effective? 
they have nerfed them recently. Okay. I say recently. It's probably been a while at this point. Uh, and yeah. so I don't feel that it is as effective. However, there are times that I'm really seeing the effectiveness of it. Um, right. And I don't know if that's a glitch or if it's just I found a situation where it really works out better. Um, but I'm open to other options. Like one of my favorite exotics is the Stompies. Yeah. And there ain't no, they ain't no, they ain't no land or time or moment where the Stompies aren't doing something for you. The Stompies are available at Zur right now. I know they are, and that was I was I, was, uh, I think it was Austin in, in one of my I was live streaming alone, and I was like, yeah. oh yeah, Austin, tell me what what happened in uh, where Zur, and he mentioned you know what he had, but he left out Stompies. Like he literally told me everything else but Stompies, and like Excuse everybody has Stompies. stompies. I got my stompies, and so I'm good. I didn't need to know that, but I was like, boy, yeah. you left out the best exotic. <laughs> so, I, so I'll tell you, Stephen, I've been thinking. I've been thinking about, hmm, what if I just went back to stompies? Because I don't know how much I'm really being affected by mm-hmm. this, uh, So uh, by Shards of Galinar. But he, here know. would be my advice for you. Um, and a lot, a lot of destiny today, guys. So um, you run, you run uh, the um, the knife thrower gunslinger, the, the um, wave a thousand cuts. Yes. Right? You, you yes. run that. Are, are you are you still satisfied with that class even without shards of Galinar? You're you're just one hundred percent like yes, this is my class. Yeah, I think so because okay. all shards of Galinar is doing is when I use my super where I throw a bunch of really strong knives. Yeah. Basically, every kill I get with that gives me super energy back. So right. if we come up to a big cluster of people and I hit it, hit all of them and kill them, I'm pretty much going to get my super right back. Um, right. Or, and then likewise, likewise, if I hit an enemy, like a boss, mm-hmm. with those and it doesn't kill it, I get a certain percentage based on damage I do back. Right. Um, and certain enemies that's um, tuned differently. Like one place I've seen Shards of Galinar really be effective is in Gambit because whatever the percentage damage versus percentage you get back is in Gambit, I get my super back instantly. Yeah. So like if I can get to the boss round uh, and have a super, I can pretty much just super over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but other than that, I, I other than that, the reason I like Way of a Thousand Cuts is it is super powerful, or at least it, right. it used to be when it when it first got started. Um, right. I was I was annihilating bosses in one or two supers. Do you um, still feel that way? I still feel that way for the most part. I think it's gotten a little bit weaker, um, but I def, I ne- obviously I don't like. Uh, Gunslinger, where you're shooting right. your hand cannon. I was never right. good at that. Um, Arc Strider, I liked uh, because, uh, well, just you were doing melee attacks, and I always liked that and leaned towards that. Right. Um, the sh- Specter Blades, Spectral Blades, um, mm-hmm. I did that for a strike because we had to be void uh, yep. or something. And um, I really, really liked that. But again, my play style has changed a little bit because I've been running way of a thousand cuts so long. I save right. my super till we have a, a cluster of enemies or a boss. And I guess maybe I, maybe I did that with when I was running arc strider as well. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I feel like my mentality has changed of, I use that super to hit one boss hard. Yeah. Um, whereas both spectral blades and arc strider, those are going to be take out a lot of enemies quickly, and if you still got some time and can hit the boss physically, because sometimes the boss is like like that void strike where or not void strike a uh, mercury strike where the yeah. the robot is spinning around you and you never can get to it physically. Like yeah. my if I was doing arc strider, I'm useless. Mm-hmm. So I don't so, know. So, so I'm I'm pretty happy with the way of a thousand okay. cuts is what I'm saying. I I, I figure you probably would be. Um, so and I'm having this conversation because um, you know I recently changed from a two uh, from a two men of grace to um, 
the storm trance that uh, or the storm mm-hmm. collar that has chaos reach, mm-hmm. um, because I realized that there it can actually actually be pretty um, pretty fun and interesting to play different subclasses based on the tree itself and not just the super because that's the mistake I was making for a while. Right. Um, and so so. I, I just I, only reason I asked that is because I remember you saying that you weren't the biggest fan of the knife, um, like the fan. Yeah, but, um, I don't like I don't like the the throwing the fan of knives. Um, yeah, I like it better than probably just having a super punch, right? Um, because I can at least use that as a distance thing. Um, right. Oh shoot. And I'm not a huge fan of the solar bombs that that hunters have, or I guess everybody yeah. has the same bombs, right? Grenades. No, uh, e- each each element's different. Well, I, obviously each element's different, but like my arc. Well, the classes are different. I think they have one class specific grenade per element. Interesting. Well, anyway, um, I don't like any of the other solar uh, grenades that hunters have. I've got, I'm using the one that that the little trace bombs come up and like seek uh what they're looking for the rest of them i'm just not i I, i've tried them or i've looked at them and i just don't think for what i use grenades for it's going to work very well yeah Um, yeah. i did love the arc uh striders grenade though because you throw it out it would pop up and it would scan the area and basically anything that got caught in its scan blew up (laughs) yeah um and that was Um, a great one so um but like Here's I don't I like do. I don't like any of the void uh, hunters. I, I didn't like stuff. any of the void grenades either. They mm-hmm. were terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, but here's here's what I would do uh, just to kind of like try to figure out a play style. Mm-hmm. One of two things. One, um, find a subclass that you are as close to 100% satisfied that you can be, mm-hmm. and use an exotic that just heightens that the, mm-hmm. which for example like you're doing with way of thousand cuts shards of galanor that's kind of how i was with uh and i'm going to be again because of the thing we're going to talk about next with destiny but mm-hmm. um a tomb of grace well of radiance well of radiance is is my jam so i just make it to where i get it as much as possible yeah um so either find a subclass that you are just 100 percent yes this is it let's go or do what i did with the warlock and find an exotic that basically think of it as, you know, that each tree has four branches or four um, spots. Find an exotic that basically gives you a fifth one. Because, like, for me, the overcharged Arc Soul, mm-hmm. that is the entire reason I'm playing Stormcaller right now. Mm-hmm. A- and I basically was like, this exotic sounds amazing, built the entire build off of that exotic and just made everything... Uh, else kind of the cherry on top to Mm -hmm. where like everything just kind of fell into place to make the exotic work um that can be risky because you know you never know when an exotic is going to get nerfed right Um, but to me it's the most fun when my exotic allows me to do something that i otherwise would not be able to do Um, what you're telling me steven is i need to go back to the stompies that's what you're telling me that is not what I'm telling. You. That's what I'm hearing. That's At what all. I'm hearing. Um, Something you can't do. That's the stuff. I, I would just, I, mean. I would just say, like, even if you're just like doing whatever, you're not doing any bounties to where you have to get kills as that specific subclass. I would say just play around with it, experiment, because, um, for all you know, like I thought I would never use Chaos Reach. And now I'm using Chaos Reach for anything that's like so low to three players. Mm-hmm. I, I use that one because I found some synergies that I really like. And so I would recommend for you, like, don't be afraid to play with those that other stuff because you never know what you'll be like. Oh wow, I didn't know that was there. I really like that. Oh wow, they've updated this since Forsaken. That's yeah. really good. And you might find those pieces where you can just say, I really like this, and then plug an exotic into that, and then you might have something dangerous and uh, at the end of the day of course there is the third option which is just find an exotic that complements your weapon Mm -hmm. um which in in the case of what we've been talking about i do think that um if you're going to be an archer 
like mm -hmm. primarily like bows is, are what you do, I would mm -hmm. say the best combo would probably be Oathkeeper and Le Monarch, but that's just my humble opinion. But I yeah, I enjoy I this try, kind of stuff. I want to try Le Monarch. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll have to look through some of the supers and subclasses and see what I think. Because I used to run Arc Strider and really enjoy it, but yeah. I really do prefer soul damage right. and, and that. So I don't know. I'm, uh, I'll have I would to look just into suggest, it, like, if you ever are doing stuff on a planet, like something is taking you to Earth, mm -hmm. just be like, I'm on Earth. I think I'll play. Uh, Night Stalker daggers while I'm here, yeah. just to kind of see what see what you can do. Like, don't be afraid of using your super. That mm -hmm. way, you're not like in a strike, feeling like you have to be like, okay, I need to need to save the super for this boss. Just right. go into something that is just so low stakes where you can just have fun with it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll have to do something like that. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and and I will be with you every step of the way because this is the kind of stuff that I love in games like this is trying to figure out what works together, not only yeah. for the individual but for their gear and for their team. Yeah. Well, I don't know. And it may just be that there's not I haven't there's not an exotic for what I want to do yet or what I need yet, but I don't know. If you we'll could see. have an exotic do anything, Jake, what would it do? I don't know. I don't know. I I mean, really what I want is I want to be able to have two exotics because I want to use <laughs> Trinity Ghoul and I want to use Black Talon. So, really, Stephen, what I need is I need a legendary sword that can shoot energy blasts, and then I could call it quits right there. <laughs> Jake, what if they released a sword that could transform into a bow for your R2 hits? I don't, I don't know. I don't, no, no. No? No. Wow. No, not a, that not was a the, fan. That's, that's the closest you could get <laughs> to two exotics. Ah, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Which they're, they've, they've hinted at a... Uh, power ammo uh, bow coming with uh, Shadow Keep. Which so. could be really cool. Oh, and uh, also, before we move on from, from that gear stuff, definitely 100% mod your stuff. Um, well, yeah. yeah. Like, and, it, it, and that's the other you thing. Move, is, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to I've got to get to 750 before I spend yep. any effort on trying to perfect something or even like well, right now I'm I'm trying to get the perfect spiteful fang right um, which I, now so, I don't even know if I care that much about that because I might be switching my loadout entirely but. right so, so you don't actually have to wait till you're 750 because like for example I found a prodigal robe that I actually like the perk rolls on mm -hmm. and so I've told myself that's my 750 chess piece right there right. so what you could do is just Find a role that you really like on a armor appearance that you don't absolutely despise, and just mod it. That way, you can just infuse it up. That's what I've yeah. been doing. Well, that, that that's what I'm gonna do as well. But right yeah. now, because we're leveling constantly right now, yeah, I have basically said, okay, I'm not gonna enjoy or perform well in this game unless I have spiteful fang, shards of Galinar, and black talent. So those are the only three things that I'm bothering to infuse up. Right. Um, I already have my pants, my helmet, and my uh, you know my cape. I know which ones I want to have at 750, and they're yep. already modded. Um, okay. Okay. To good. help me perform, uh, but I'm not trying to infuse all of those up every time I can. Um, once I hit like. 745 and like we're coming up close to 50 then i might start to okay you know i've got a 750 helmet let me ma you know let me infuse that with my helmet i want and boom there you go now that's done you know yeah. but yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes cool. we'll all right it out. let's move on let's move on from my stuff you you've got a lot of exciting rumors coming uh for for the next couple of weeks with menagerie and some other stuff so in season of opulence i do oh i see what you're saying got mm -hmm. it so next well actually at the time of this airing tomorrow um they are coming out with the next weapon quest and according to all signs are pointing to this it's the lumina quest is that what it's called yeah mm -hmm. um and the lumina quest is allegedly going to lead us to the acquisition of a new hand cannon that is the um basically the polar opposite of Thorn, where Thorn mm -hmm. is 
you shoot somebody and they are poisoned, this new pistol, um, when you kill some something, you get loaded what is called a noble round. Mm-hmm. And a noble round is apparently a ally-seeking bullet that heals the person it hits and also buffs that person with weapon damage and you with weapon damage for a few seconds. I can't wait you, for you to have this. I cannot wait to have this, Jay. <laughs> and apparently the way it works, and I really like this concept. This is a very clever move from Bungie uh, where you load rounds by getting a precision, or not precision, a iron sight kill. So if you are aiming down the barrel and kill mm-hmm. something, that's what loads the round, and you do not fire that round until you hip fire. So that means if you don't hold down L2, basically, and you just fire from the hip, that is the only thing that fires your noble round. Interesting. So you can, you can load the noble round and keep shooting and hold mm-hmm. on to that. This is my assumption. You can hold on to that noble round until you're ready to fire it, and when you're ready to fire it, you just go uh, hip fire, boom, and then just go back into it. Right. That's that's genius. <laughs> that's that's, that's good. really really clever. Um, but the the thing I talked to Austin about this. Austin, hey, if you're there in the chat, um, I talked to Austin um, about why I'm so excited about this and why it's basically the thing that might throw me back into a tomb of grace mm-hmm. already. Um, a tomb of grace has this boon. I think it's called benevolent dawn. Mm-hmm. I, like that just dawned on me. D- dawned on me. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, but the reason I tell you to always touch touch my rift, I'm always like, Jake, touch my rift. It's mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. whenever I buff a teammate, whether that's healing them, overshielding them, or weapon uh, buffing them, mm-hmm. I get Benevolent Dawn, and that increases my cooldown time for my abilities. Right. What if this healing Lumina hand cannon what if that procs can't... Benevolent Dawn? Yeah. I will have constant ability recharge rate to where I'm getting everything back within like five seconds. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. So so, like, so that that was my question is, are you, is this just going to become your new hand cannon that you're using whenever we're playing together? Or yeah. are you only yeah. going to use this with Dawnblade or, or uh, well, well of Radiance? I might just use it all the time when I'm running mm-hmm. with someone. If for yeah. no other reason to just master it yeah um, well like I, I figured you know if you're solo playing you're probably going to have crimson because that's healing you um yeah but if crimson you and i are doing gun. some stuff you know it's just you and me i didn't know if this was enough having that where you can buff me a little bit was going to be enough to really bother because like i know we've been playing a lot of the menagerie and your comment coming out of it was like this is this was designed for my well of radiance yeah, uh, absolutely. Build. Like this is yep. what the environment that 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 build needs to be in. Um, yeah. So I didn't know if 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 uh, you felt like this this gun was gonna kind of lock you into place. It honestly, I'm probably just gonna end up being a solo build, mm-hmm. uh, a solo build guy and a team build guy. And yeah. I think if it does proc benevolent dawn. It is That's gonna be awesome. totally justified to to run it whenever I've got a teammate because mm-hmm. I'm basically using you to get mm-hmm. five second cooldowns so I could have grenades every five seconds or weapon da- damage buff melee hits every five seconds empowering rift every five seconds so really even though the well of radiance warlock is the lowest damage of all of the subclasses. Mm-hmm. Its frequency of ability use with that kind of proc is is pretty great. I mean, sure, a Void Walker can overcharge his grenade and deal a hefty amount of damage with it, but that grenade's going to be gone for 30 to 40 seconds. I can right. throw four within that time, probably. Yeah. So, I don't know. There, there just seems like there's a lot of utility there, and I'm so excited. <laughs> Austin is said that while I'm at work on Tuesday, he's going to start cracking down on how to fu- how to complete the Lumina quest so okay. that when I get home from work he can be like see he can be like alright Steven here we go <laughs> let's get here we go thing. let's step one um, and then there's another rumor going around that bad juju uh, from D1 <laughs> is going to be the last uh, weapon that comes with opulence okay so bad juju and 
this is back when I ran Night Stalker Hunter in D1 before right. they broke it. Um, ba- Bad Juju is a pulse rifle that, for every kill, gives you super energy. Mm-hmm. So it just feeds your super bar. So I was able to get unlimited super, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I would l- enjoy Bad Juju as much in this game, because like I said before, I'm, tr- I'm trying to veer away from super mm-hmm. abilities mm-hmm. to where mm-hmm. they, they are just the icing on the cake. And I can just create a build that is almost optimal all the time. That's right. kind of mm-hmm. what the Arc Soul concept is. Um, so I don't know about Bad Juju, but on the other hand, Bad Juju could get me to that point to where it's like super every 30 seconds. Right. Um, and I just loved the gun. It was a really cool looking and operating gun. So kudos to Bungie if they end up giving me the gun I've always wanted and then the gun... <laughs> That I always used back right. then. <laughs> well, it was funny because when we, we, we started Destiny, uh, all I remember was you were just like, this. I can't do what I was doing in D1. Yeah. And you were like, I need bad juju or else this, this isn't going to work. And yeah. uh, so hearing, oh man, bad juju's coming, I was like, but, but it's one of those things that like, I heard that and I was like, oh man. Ah, but Steven already likes the game now. Like Steven, Steven's figured out what he wants to do. Um, so I, I, I would, I would I, honestly consider getting my hunter back out there, getting bad juju for him, and actually reliving a little bit of the old days mm-hmm. when um, I was able to proc courage of the pack constantly uh-huh. and increase the team's stats. Because that was that that was one of the, the most enjoyable destiny experiences for me was my hunter in the first game. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But. I don't know, maybe for old time's sake. I just, I love the gun. So I'm, I'm anxious, excited to see what they do with it. Oh, man, it would take so much to get one of my other characters <laughs> up yeah. and running. I don't even want to think about that right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> but. it's, gosh, I don't even know where I left my Warlock off. Like, I played with my Titan a little bit more just because I really liked the character I had created. Um, yeah. You got but, everyone caught up to Forsaken, like because I think you got everyone to the max really? light level before Forsaken came out. Because I remember that you, you you were doing this whole thing where you're like trying to get them to a milestone, where it was when we were playing before Forsaken came out, and you were like, I just want to get all my characters to this point so that they can jump into Forsaken. And then I don't think you ever did jump into Forsaken with them. I, I, yeah, I don't it may not have been either. Forsaken. It may have been another milestone, but I know you definitely got through Warmind with at least your uh, your Titan. I think it was just my Titan because my uh, my Warlock. Every time I get in the loading screen, there's that blue, like boost their level icon. Yep. Uh, and not even not even like power level. It's just their level. <laughs> right. Because um, because the Forsaken expansion boosted it from thirty to fifty. So yeah. Would your is your Titan at fifty? Maybe. That'd be surprising because that means they would have gotten through Forsaken. I don't know. Uh, I wonder if I can look on my on my app. Let me see. Uh, is uh, yeah. I'm I'm excited to see what and learn more about um, Shadow Keep and jump into to that yeah. some more. I- I'm pleased with where we are right now because they've managed to get me engaged through the weapon quests coming out, the menagerie being here, and this is the hype building up towards more content. So it's like yeah. I'm not playing the game, twiddling my thumbs, being like, well, I got to get ready for the new content. I'm playing current content that I'm engaged with. Right. Excited to see what else they're going to do. So this is a really good time for them, I think. Yeah. Um, is the power level going to raise again with Shadow Of course Keep? it is. Of course it is. Great. It's probably going to be like 900 or something. <laughs> it's just so, I don't know, it's, it's, I get, I get that, you know, getting your power level up is like something you're working towards, but at the mm-hmm. same time, like, by the time we get to September, when uh, Shadow Keep comes, we're, we, we will have been at 750 for maybe a month. And it's just like, you know, I'll have all the gear that I wanted for a month and then I'll have it for one mission (laughs) when Shadow Keep comes out and then I'll be back to looking like a trash panda. Yep. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, My Titan is level 30. My Warlock is level 21. Ooh. (laughs) 
Yeah. Yeah, they're never they're never they're never gonna see the light of day again. No. <laughs> they're, they're they're lost in the tower somewhere doing yeah. doing something. Uh, um, but but at least regarding what you said about um, looking like a trash panda for Shadowkeep, at least they are adding the transmog system so that that won't be as much of an issue. Yes, I think that's gonna yeah I think that's gonna help dramatically. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see where the rest of the game goes. But yep. Um, yeah. Is there anything else we wanted to talk about? Disney. Hello. Hey. Hey, Disney. We didn't talk about that yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Stephen, let's talk about what we're doing this week. We're going to the happiest place on Earth, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to Disney, Disney World. Disney World. Uh, Stephen and I, our wives, and then four more two pe- people. Two people. <laughs> uh, so, oh, yeah, four a, more people, yeah. A, a pretty a pretty big group. Um, I'm excited. Stephen, I, I, you and I went this past October yeah. uh, with our wives and had a good time there. Uh, we did a live stream from Disney riding uh, the Buzz Lightyear uh, Defend the Galaxy or whatever it is ride um, yep. where you're shooting laser beams at different enemies and whatnot. Uh, but uh, this year, I think, Stephen, we're going to try to film some sort of a Let's Play at Toy Story Mania, which is yep. the very similar idea it's a toy story ride but you've got these like rope pulling guns that you're moving and aiming yeah. uh we're gonna try to film a let's play of us doing that i'm not sure how it's gonna work but uh i i think we're gonna give it a shot i'm excited I, i'm i'm excited to just go back to disney because mm-hmm. I, I have we went to magic kingdom last yep. year and that was the first time i'd been to a disney park since 2011 wow yeah so I'm, I'm ready to go back and see what all's changed, um, and ride some of the rides that I still to this day haven't been able to ride. Well, you're plus, gonna, we're going to get the full gamut because we're going to every park uh, except Animal Kingdom. Oh, really? That's yeah, we're funny. not going. As far as I know, we're not going. Who needs those well, animals? You know. What well, I, mean? I would have liked to see Pandora, but oh yeah, I forgot that's there now too. Yeah. Um, well, Next and time. also we're going to get to like we're eating at Be Our Guest, I think. Uh, yep. Yep. We're, we're going to actually get to do some of the experiences that we that I've never done before. Um, yep. So I'm, I'm really excited. To Fun fact, I actually went to Cinderella's Royal Table when my family took a family trip to Disney World, and I was an, a piece of human garbage back then and didn't want to do anything. Uh-huh. I believe I was 15, maybe 16. Oh, yeah. And that was when I didn't want to do anything but, you know, stay at home and play Lord of the Rings online. And right. I was really shy and didn't know how to talk to people. Um, so Cinderella met me. And I didn't know what to do. I was just like, hi, I don't know how to talk to girls. I need a princess. Hi, hi. I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> yep. Oh, man, I would have paid good money to see that. Yeah. I would pay good money to wipe that from my own memory. <laughs> um, uh, I, and, and I want to talk about, uh, so we're going with a group of eight people, right? And I think we've talked about this before on a live stream or something, but uh, it's yep. worth repeating. And it will be repeated again. Um, we're, we're all wearing Toy Story shirts or we're all wearing shirts that have a Toy Story character on them uh, and they're all different colors and it's just going to be like oh yeah we'll, we'll, wear, we'll all wear them one day for a group photo and uh, Steven and I selected I'm going to be Forky and Steven is going to be Wheezy the penguin from Toy Story 2 uh, it's okay if you forgot him just, so did Andy it just, <laughs> it just so happens that both of our shirts are white. Like the rest of our crew, I don't think any of them have the same color shirt. Uh, but so I want Steven and I to take a photo together, and the caption's going to be, I'm trash and he's wheezy. <laughs> yeah. Get the hashtag trash and wheezy going. Trash people, and wheezy. We're going viral. <laughs> we're going viral, baby. So I guarantee you that will be part of our joke in the Let's in the uh, that 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 re- will be repeated in the Let's Play. I, yeah. I guarantee you. Absolutely. Because I'm. What was I the, don't uh, know if we're going to be wearing those shirts that day, mm-hmm. but we're going to be wearing those well, shirts. Sh- that well, day. We got Toy Story shirts. Surely we're going to wear the Toy Story shirts on the day we go to Toy Story Land. That you would hope, Stephen. Yeah. You would hope, but I don't I'm know. Just, I'm just. So, I'm just saying. All I'm saying, Steven, is you need to be prepared to wear that shirt twice. Because that's the shirt we're wearing for this last one. It's really unfortunate that it's a white shirt then. I, I agree, but you know what? <laughs> we're just going to live with it, I, right? I feel like I feel like I should have gotten a bigger size because 
I'm very self-conscious of my body, obviously. Um, right. And wearing a white shirt, it's like, man, what's that going to look like when it get like I get sweaty? Is it just going to become a see-through shirt? I need to wear a shirt underneath it. Crap, I, was about to say, I should have gotten bring a bigger size. an undershirt just yeah. in case. Yeah. That's, it's going to be a great time. It's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Um, one more thing to talk yeah. about. Um, I, I've been talking about this a lot because I've been working very hard on it for the mm-hmm. past week. Um, but I just want to brag on it a little bit uh, because the, the channel has experienced us play playing Sentinels of the Multiverse. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, as you guys know, uh, probably, it, well, some of you, there's a game called Sentinels of the Multiverse that is a four, up to five-player co-op card game. Um, it, it's It's a board game, technically, because all of the pieces come in the game but it's all done with with cards um so it's basically like up to five players uh, pick a hero to play as Mm -hmm. um and they fight a villain controlled by the game and so my thought was man i've got so much content for this game because you've seen jake you've seen my box it's like literally has a box that weighs 50 pounds um, at least 50 pounds just full of cards yeah (laughs) Because we've got, I want to say, and this may be lowballing it, I don't know, around 30 heroes to play from. Mm-hmm. Probably about that many villains. Um, and then environment cards. Like It's just a massive game. Right. Um, so I, I've been trying to get as many people that I know of that are like actually like really into this game. Jake yeah. would have been on this list, but he doesn't live near me, so mm. that makes me sad. Uh, we might need to Skype you in or something. We can figure something out there. I, I want to figure that out. I just don't know how it would work because I would have to have cards with me. Um, right. And, like, the only the only thing I can think of is, like, if you, if I picked a character, let's say, who's, who's the... Who's the girl that I really like to use? The uh, cosmic Power Ranger girl. I- idealist. Idealist. Let's just yeah. say you gave me Idealist, and like <laughs> I just had her cards, and like Jake's Idealist. If he dies, he's out. Like that's it. Um, that's the yeah. only way I could think of it to work. But like I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't. I wanna thought about have like pressure. I thought about getting like Anna or somebody that is around but not playing. Just, like get a GoPro on her head. And have her be Jake at the table, so she's got her cards, and she could be like, "All right, Jake, here's what we got," and just lift the hand up <laughs> to the camera. <laughs> that would suck. That would not be fun yeah. for them at all. Um, and then just to make it even funnier, make it to where we can't hear you, but she's got earbuds in, so she has to say literally everything you say. So it's Anna trying to be Jake. For <laughs> oh man, I love it. <laughs> That'd be I funny. love it already. But but we're doing uh, what I'm calling the camp uh, a campaign basically, mm-hmm. um, which is where. We are trying to face all of the villains um, from easiest to hardest um, until we've just done everything, basically. Right. Um, and there have been some rules established that are, have been kind of what has changed this from just being a, a group getting together and playing Sentinels. Um, so, for example, a, when a hero ends a fight at zero mm-hmm. HP. So when they are mm-hmm. incapacitated and they, in, the battle ends with them incapacitated, they're dead. Um, permadeath, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's me. Come mm-hmm. on, come on. Um, so without getting too deeply into it, there's also a wound system to where when an, a hero ends a fight with every 10 HP is that is missing, we might reduce that number every 10 hp that's missing at the end of a fight that hero can't be used for that many villain fights so if a hero has ended a fight with 20 health gone um they're out for two games yeah Mm -hmm. Uh, so that forces us to to pick different characters also i added an rng loot system jake (laughs) Yeah, so you were telling me. So I've heard I've heard Stephen talk about this because he, as he's been developing, he's been filling me in on what he's doing. the The, the loot system is the last thing I've heard uh, heard. So w- what is this? So each hero has at least one variant version, which think right. of it as a, a costume. But mm-hmm. in this game, it not only affects what the like the card itself, but their health, like right. their total health, and what starting power they have. 
So, for example, my favorite character, his name's Captain Cosmic. Um, his standard version um, makes it to where he has a power called Fabricate, which he can use every turn. And that means that he can look at the top card of his um, deck and either put it in his hand or play it. So mm-hmm. it's a really it, – it's very good at him basically getting – twice as many constructs out. He's a summoner, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, Twice as many constructs out per turn. If I play a variant, I don't have Fabricate. Instead, Mm -hmm. uh, the Extremiverse Captain Cosmic, for example, his inherent power that I can use every turn is um, Captain Cosmic and each of his constructs deal one target, one damage. Think about that, though. Yeah, because you end up with so many constructs. It, it, it would be slower because I wouldn't have Fabricate, but if I'm trying right. to run a damaging Captain Cosmic, I have that variant to choose from. Mm-hmm. So more hero, certain heroes have way more variants than others, but what I've done here is make it to where when we start the campaign, all variants are locked. Mm-hmm. Every villain defeated um, allows the, the spinning of a wheel that I've designed. Um, I even color-coded all of the hero names. <laughs> I had way too much time on my hands. I was going um, to say, really? Yeah. And that wheel has every hero's name on it. Uh-huh. Um, and each time we spin it, we'll shuffle the wheel back so there's no chance of just memorizing the pattern. And whenever right. that, that wheel lands on a hero, you get to pick from the selection of that hero's variants. Um, so that could make it to where, like, maybe Miles, who's in our group, really likes... Um, this Haka character, but only plays him as a certain variant. But we roll a variant for a guy named Absolute Zero, who is kind of the running joke of this game because Mile, last time Miles played him, he burned himself to death. <laughs> um, but he might roll a variant for Absolute Zero and have to actually intentionally look at all of them and be like, oh, wow, I didn't know that was in there. And suddenly you've got someone more interested in a character that they didn't even know existed. Right. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm really just trying to be intentional about, one, getting people to just really branch out with this game. Um, mm-hmm. For example, with me, La Camadora, the s- time-traveling space pirate, is now one of my favorite characters because I've played her. Um, but also, I want to create a campaign that's replayable. Right. Um, and this is super replayable, I think, because um, we're also doing where if the, each villain has a challenge text... So if you play the challenge text, which, for example, a guy named Gloomweaver, his challenge text is Gloomweaver is immune to all projectile and melee damage, um, which would just be for the entire game. If we played a challenge villain, then we can resurrect a dead hero. Oh, really? But, yeah, we, we added that. But the caveat there being any hero that ends a challenge fight at zero HP is gone for good. No revives. mm so if we lose, like, uh, Fnatic, which is Eric's favorite hero, and he's like, we can take this challenge villain, let's do it because I need Fnatic back, we might yeah. go in there and use heroes that were kind of like, these aren't our mains, but, but we're good with them, but we wouldn't mind losing them. We could go mm-hmm. in with that just to get him his main back. And so there's, there's a lot of thinking going into it. We're developing a lot of really cool strategies like uh, Fnatic being another example, she has a card called End of Days, which board wipes everything. Right. Um, literally everything but character cards and relics go away. And so we realized Eric really loves that card because he loves screwing over everyone he plays with. <laughs> um, we realized that Ra uses a lot of relics. Mm-hmm. So End of Days would not affect him as much as it would affect other people. And right. one of my favorite characters, Writhe, he has one card that he really needs at all times, but he can fetch it every turn. Right. So those two heroes would be a really good combo with Fnatic because they wouldn't have to worry about getting um, wipe like they're all of their field wiped out. Right. So there's been some really cool thinking going into like who plays who and who to complement. It's just, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, we play uh, every other Tuesday, um, so we're going to be playing Tuesday night, and uh, I'm really excited. But yeah, we'll have to figure out a way to get you plugged in, Jake, because you would I, you would love this. I want to, because yeah, I, I've I've have really enjoyed every time I've played it. Um, it's so so fun. I just I, you know me, I I would struggle to to be able to commit to every Tuesday, um, right? But I'm glad you've got a group that 
Yeah, and, and I, I, we're we're gonna fall off from from every Tuesday because we did it last week and we're doing it again this week because Brody couldn't mm-hmm. make it and specifically asked to do it this week. Right. Um, but we're gonna try to do every two Tuesdays. Um, gotcha. Just to give everyone a little bit more opportunity to try it, and I hope that they can stick with it because um, everyone seems to have be having a really good time. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's a fun game. I really enjoy it, yeah. and I'm glad you kind of just come up with a way to play it and make it a campaign. And I really like the permadeath. Yeah, you've people have been in, talking so. about D and D so much, where it's like, oh yeah, our D and D campaign. I'm over here just like, I feel like. My, a lot of my friends that I would want to be in a D&D session just don't have time or commitment for that. And no. so I figured let's just find a way to incorporate a game that we already know, love, and play and just make it feel kind of like a D&D campaign. Exactly, so, yeah. Here we are. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Total Cast. We do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, there's a couple things you can do to help us out. Number one, if you're watching on YouTube, you're already at TotalGames.com. You can like this video, share it with your friends, leave us a comment, let us know what you thought of these fun topics. Uh, do you like having shows where me and Steven just kind of chat and just go this, whatever direction we want to go? This was uh, different, but it was fun. It, it was different. It was very fun. I, um, I, I listened to some podcasts like this where they just kind of come in and they're like, Hey, here's a topic, but like we'll they'll talk about whatever's going on this week or what they're doing this weekend and stuff like that. Uh, and I really enjoy that podcast. It's something that I'll listen to uh, a lot. Uh, but anyway, I, I I like how we kind of throw a little bit of everything into it. But anyway, let us know what you thought of this one. Uh, if you're an audio listener, you can leave us a review uh, on iTunes. That uh, really helps people find the podcast. Uh, you can also follow us at Chortle Games on Twitter and Facebook. And then join our Discord. Uh, we have a whole channel section dedicated to podcast questions or topics or news stories. So you can put those in and, and we can talk about things you, you might be interested in hearing or listening to. The podcast airs every Monday at 12 o'clock Central Time. Uh, we premiere this, so it's pre-recorded, but it premieres. So you can we have the live chat. Uh, Steven or I usually uh, jump in. Usually Steven's almost always there. Uh, to, to be in the chat live so uh, you can kind of interact with us via the chat um, and all that good stuff so it's a lot of fun, it's a little different but but we like it um, and yeah, so Monday 12 o'clock Central Time, Stephen, thanks for being here as always yeah. um, we've got some other stuff that we do on this channel, Stephen uh, usually, <laughs> we, we do stuff almost every day of the week yeah uh, but uh, we're going to have a, an interesting week this week. Uh, like yeah. we said, we're going to be at Disney. Uh, so, um, obviously, the podcast airs 12 o'clock Central Time on Monday. Uh, Tuesdays is typically when we would do uh, Team Up Tuesday. Um, obviously, Steven's doing his Sentinel, Sentinels of the Multiverse thing. Uh, so, I'm not going to be there. We can't do a Team Up Tuesday. Uh, so, and we're going to be at Disney Thursday. And it's 4th yep. of July. So, go celebrate America and hang out with your friends. But you're not going to be hanging out with us because we're going to be doing other stuff. So uh, we'll have a <laughs> we'll have a uh, let's play this Wednesday. It's gonna be episode, okay? Oh, thank the, God! The Finally. stupid mobile game <laughs> that Steven and I played. It's horrible. <laughs> that's that's what I have down here. I've had it down here, but then like cadence of of Hyrule happened, and then yep. uh, my friend Pedro happened, and so I had to push it back. But that's what's <laughs> That's what's airing. So it's another stupid mobile game that me and Steven have found and, and play through. So uh, that'll be your Wednesday Let's Play. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we won't have any live streams uh, Friday or Saturday like we normally would because we're going to be in Disney. So um, if the opportunity arises and we want to try to do a live stream like we did with Buzz, uh, we may do something like that or we may just do a live stream from Disney. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. But anyway, it, uh, that's so, why you got to follow us. On Facebook and Twitter and Discord, so you know what's going on. And if by some crazy chance you happen to be in Disney World this week, we, you might see us. Come on just, down. Just come up. Just bump into us, you know. Yeah. We'll have a good time. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's going to do it for this week. Steven, thank you as always. Yep. Uh, folks, thank you for hanging out in the chat and uh, listening on iTunes, all that good stuff. We'll see you all next time. Bye.